I'm Sonia Sonia Till. I work as a digital catalyst at the Bardish's Landis Museum in Karlsruhe, and I'm busy finding out which methods of artificial intelligence make sense in applications to the digital collections and specifically developing a tool that can be used by the users of the Allows Museums to curate their own content with the help of AI. Oh, that's cool. How do you get there? So what is your, your background, your professional focus? Yes, basically I'm just really interested in culture and therefore also in digital culture and the whole topic of digitality. And what about us? Means I am interested in transformation processes and have also worked in the field of digital further education for a long time. And that was the entry or the transition into the field of artificial intelligence for me, which was actually the logical next step. Okay, what did you learn to get to what I am? Trained as a historian and philosopher. I then trained as a curator with a focus on participation. So I'm primarily concerned with what access people have to education and knowledge and how it can be designed as easily and freely as possible, i.e. what opportunities people have to open up new areas through education. And Exactly, I then worked for a long time in the field of digital scientific further education and now work again specifically in the museum sector. Okay, that means you didn't do any further training in the STEM area, but somehow stumbled into learning on the job and then you qualified yourself further. I have that, you can say that exactly, so I was just always looking for areas of work that corresponded to my skills and during the job, in principle, I further qualified with the job, but AI is now also sounds very ambitious at first, not artificial, there is quite a boom in intelligence right now. What is it about it that fascinates you that you are dealing with it now? Yes, I think the field of artificial intelligence is first of all one that is, yes, simply currently being discussed very widely, that shapes our society, that is strongly promoted and pushed, also from different economic areas, and that has strong transformative power for our societies, our processes. So we work. I think that's just an area where it's worth being active and creative from a cultural perspective. MHM, let's go back to what you learned. Exactly. So how is your relationship with so the STEM, STEM area so traditionally means mathematics, mathematics computer science, natural sciences, and technology, and as a philosopher and historian, I cannot be assigned to one of these areas. I was also terribly bad at math. The only thing that interested me and was also logical for me. There is probability calculation and also what is used a lot in the AI area. So I came to this area or actually came to this field of work because I'm interested in the connection between man and machine, between technology and society, i.e. because I'm interested in how we shape our society and that's where technology and computer science and also that the area of AI, which is currently developing very rapidly, is essential. And K is simply a topic that has long been part of everyday life, but is still largely a mystery. Yes, for some it is such a simple process and technology, and for others it is a symbol of transformation, and for others it is simply a new business area.
And as with any technology, it is not important whether it is good or bad, but rather where is it useful and where is where is the most superfluous. So where can it serve and where is it a danger or even a risk to our lives or even the environment and nature? And yes, the field of computer science is currently experiencing a very strong upswing and has developed from a nerd subject to a pop star in the sciences over the past few decades. And you can also look at that historically. Culture or cultural studies are also very useful for this. So you can classify it in terms of scientific theory, for example the possibilities of gaining new and different insights into our world. And what advantages? We can also use AI to open up new fields of knowledge and make them accessible, and we can simply use it to expand our knowledge base. For example, with the help of AI, we can make large museum collections visible in clusters with a single click and show patterns in collections. You just couldn't do that so well in the past. We could prove who wrote the text, so you can see that, for example written by a wife and not by the actual author or for other areas in culture, AI is super exciting, so unfinished symphonies can. Now, new art and cultural forms can be created by an AI and in collaboration between AI, i.e. man and machine, intermediate processes and existing art and culture, and that is incredibly exciting and I simply think it is worth dealing with. Yes, but at the same time there is also. If I think there are indications that the previous art and culture is not superfluous or outdated, I think there is currently a strong fear of it, so there is a strong fear. Rather, the fact that new technologies and forms develop through digitality, which also open up new fields of action and work, and that's actually the interesting thing, if you look at it historically, is a completely normal process. So if we look at the development from horses to cars, or from handicrafts to steam engines, or from radio to television and painting to photography, it doesn't mean that painting is becoming superfluous, but that new forms are simply emerging via a new form of technology train, and yes, new fields open up and that is exactly exciting. And this field of tension is AI now a tool, an assistant. A system or even a new way of life is also discussed a lot. It simply means that KIN is a developing field of action that can and should be considered economically, legally, sociologically, administratively, but also historically or philosophically. And that's why it's great if as many people as possible get involved and are critical and hopefully smart from their respective perspectives make the effort to understand what actually happened and also have a personal interest in developing the field productively and creatively in a forward-looking way. Exactly that means you are a historian and you are now dealing with such a future technology. What fascinates you about this career path? Yes, I'm a historian. I've worked in education for a long time, so I like it. So together I like to learn, and I like to learn together, to support others, and also to understand how now, for example, machine learning is also an exciting process and how we interact with machines. So I'm interested in digital learning spaces in a broader sense. I originally come from the field of Holocaust education and the culture of remembrance, so I just have a very deep connection with the need to tell stories.
to express yourself, to leave something behind and, in the sense of memory, to restore memories of the shoes, for example, of the form of justice. So this basic question of who tells whose story and what information is openly accessible and how it is remembered for us it is simply incredibly important for people and through this work on memorials and museums I actually came to this area of participation. The question what form of participation do people have in culture? And not as an end in itself, but always with the question what does this mean for the current structure of society? Yes, so exactly how, for example, do we want to design our city? Yes. And to apply this approach now, so to speak, to a specific field that is currently very influential, namely the field of AI is, I think, an important option too. In the best sense of empowerment, yes, that people have the opportunity to about their own, their own educational path, the new skills they acquire and at the same time the opportunity. Helping to shape the technology by understanding how this technology works can be used, but at the same time having the opportunity, aha, I can use it like that now, yes, and I think that's easy for me, very worthwhile, yes, what technological developments do you see in your current area? On what? Welche technologischen Entwicklungen siehst du in deinem, in deinem jetzigen Bereich, worauf? What are you looking forward to too? Yes, I can already see that many of these generative AI methods make many processes and business models obsolete, and that the AI methods that are currently being developed will be developed, I believe will change everyday work a lot, make them easier, but maybe also get on my nerves. Yes, well, I think that's exciting. The question of how we write texts, or produce images, or how we search, how we find, how we ask questions and expect answers is changing a lot at the moment. At the same time, I see that there is again the danger of monopolization and commercialization and that what is actually understood as AI is actually only very strongly shaped by a few and is therefore, I think, it is all the more important that it people come from other quarters too, who think for themselves, who know history, maybe in culture. Learning and experimenting have space to bring in other perspectives, so I think culture can simply help me to open up creative spaces and encourage them. So it's important to help what we do now and then, for example, our so-called hackathons, yes, yes developer formats, where you can also get involved if you can't program that much yet, i.e. where you can actually do it, and that's yes, I think that can be a good possible start MHM, you say you like to learn, what would you like to learn next? Ähm, du sagst, du lernst gerne. Was möchtest du denn als nächstes gerne lernen? I would like to learn a lot, so I would like to finally understand how asparagus curries actually work. That's where I still have problems. Da hapert es bei mir immer noch. No, seriously. I am currently concerned with the question of what role open cultural data plays. For large machine learning models, this means, for example, what role it plays, that cultural data is contained in large language models, for example, and how it should be contained and also what legal questions are involved, so that's what I'm dealing with right now and what I would also like to learn even better is that's the question, how actually using this technology. Eigentlich diese Technologie mit 
environment and climate compatibility better together than that. I think we have a big problem there. The technology is very resource intensive and entails follow-up costs, and that's not simply the case. I think we have to learn to better assess what is actually worthwhile and what isn't. Or how can these technologies be developed in a less resource intensive way? Well, you come from the cultural sector, but that's not the classic mint sector. So the longer I deal with it, the sooner I get to the point that we hardly have any sectors that aren't rear-wheel drive, so technologies are also playing an increasingly important role in the arts. What career opportunities do you see for people who have not yet dealt with this whole digital area? Well, if you haven't even dealt with it yet, I don't think so. First of all, because I don't think you can get around it at all. Everyone has certain experiences with digitality, but otherwise, as always, I think it's important to start looking for allies you trust and, above all, look for goals that you find meaningful and then be brave and keep the ability to quickly something new. <laughs> to incorporate. Mm -hmm. And what would you recommend for adults, or can you recommend anything how they can start with such a first-time investment? Yes, there are fantastic, open, free learning opportunities, so it is highly recommended, for example the KI Campus or the Platteler Institute. There's great stuff there. Not news for now either, but for individual specific skills, YouTube is now a very good place to learn self-directed and if you want a more structured and supervised start, scientific extra-occupational further training at universities or technical colleges are certainly a good first step. They often become online hybrids. Synchronous offers and are a good way to find a structured start alongside your job or work. MHM and Kalmar can also come to your museum as an alternative. Do you also offer such entrances in any way? So, as I said, we occasionally offer developer formats that are creative, where it's about working with the data, i.e. culture, hackathons. We have different. Even public discussion rounds about individual technologies and specifically the question of how can they now be applied to the museum museum data at all. Well, that's also a possibility, and there are currently many exhibitions and yes, learning formats in the entire cultural sector, not just here in Karlsruhe, but simply at different ones nationwide. Museums, exhibitions that also offer an introduction to the AI topic, another question that was not even in the catalogue, how important is AI in art? Emergence, so I see that many artists are women artists. Use artificial intelligence yourself for their work, also for reflecting on these technologies. So do you also see a trend in art development? Yes, I see that there are more and more artists who use the technology either for support or actually for co-production, so that's just more and more. Also this approach gives aha how can I as an artist? MHM, making art together with an AI, yes, and I think that's definitely an exciting new field, that's what it means. 
On the other hand, the fact that artists who are perhaps not even trained for it simply work their way into certain test procedures also means that perhaps people who are trained in digital or computer science and have an artistic approach are increasingly entering the art world. Yes, and that's where I think the field of media art is the widest, no. Also, da ist, glaube ich, der Bereich der, der Medienkunst am, am, am allerweitesten. Ähm, ne? ähm, ja, yeah. also das well, ist, äh, that's it's just kind of an exciting new field. Mm. Yes, gibt's of course auch, there is. Ähm, mh, mh. So far too simple, simple questions where you can say aha now I can quickly take a picture and then call it art. Well I think that's what happened then it's that the question arises again what do we understand art at all? Yes, is every image generated by AI already art? Or what is art for us now? No, well, that's like that, no yes. Negotiation question, but also a good start for people who are not yet in the mint area. I think, easy to start with these tools. No, because they are sometimes fun. No, if you can generate images with them. To have AI generate images. You're not yet 45 plus. You're practically a youngster for this area. But what would you recommend to women of advanced age? Was würdest du aber denn dennoch Frauen im fortgeschrittenen Alter empfehlen? Uh, and to be a part of this future, because all these technologies are coming up now. Do you have any recommendations? Hast du da Empfehlungen? So I think a recommendation is not to proceed in a deficit-oriented manner. So I believe what happens quickly. Is that you have the feeling that you are lacking because you don't understand certain things, don't know them yet and so on. But I think it's particularly important to look at your own experiences and knowledge with self-confidence and they must be worth less. besonders wichtig, selbstbewusst auf die eigenen Erfahrungen und Kenntnisse zu schauen und die nicht weniger wert sind. So I think for this entire area it is actually particularly important to recognize that people with different prior knowledge are needed to design AI well. So if we approach it purely technically or if we approach it purely research oriented or yes, I think we get into an imbalance. So I think it's particularly important that one, that's a diverse, diversely evolving area. Well, I think that's why it's dass es ein divers, ein sich divers entwickelnder Bereich ist. Also ich glaube, deswegen ist es... Äh, It's great when people think about it from a lateral entry perspective and then at the same time confidently contribute their own previous experience and knowledge and precisely because they don't let themselves be undermined and I think there are skills from history or philosophy, for example, that can help. So, for example, source criticism, yes, we need it very very urgently now if we if we look at the large language models have to look and compare but what is the one now this is now fact and what is fiction what does the language model do with a question Yes, or also from philosophy, so reflection competence, so what kind of knowledge is it that is being produced at the moment? Yes, but also bringing that into the discussion and not simply proceeding in a purely technology-oriented manner. So in this respect I always advocate interdisciplinarity. And I'm also a big fan of the heterogeneous and I believe that's the only way collective intelligence can develop, by looking at the topic from different perspectives, exchanging ideas, working discursively and simply really on the matter and tackling the future, i.e. us not letting it drift like that, but also helping to shape it. Sonia, thank you so far. Those were my questions. Thank you for taking the time. Sonia, vielen Dank. Bis hierhin. Das waren schon meine Fragen. Super. Also, vielen Dank, dass du dir die Zeit genommen hast. Und and all the best to you and I'll end the recording for now. Hello.